Hey guys, welcome back to the Golang and React Calorie Tracker application. In today's video, we're doing two things. We'll be working on our connection.go file and we will be um, working on one of these functions, mostly get entry by ID function. And in the next video, which will be the last video for the back end at least, uh, we'll uh, work on the other remaining four functions. And then that will be the end of back end and then we'll start working on the front end side of things. Okay. So connection.go file, this is going to be of package routes because it's in the routes folder. This is how Golang understands that, you know, all the files belong to this folder and they're all of the same package. And then when you want to import that package, you can do that very easily um, by importing this package called routes. And then you can access functions from this file also and this file also. So it combines all of the functions that you write in these two or how many other files you want to write and you'll be able to access them because of package routes. They'll be in the same package. Okay, so you have import. Uh, I'll need a couple of packages, but what I'll do is I'll rely on the intelligence of my extensions to help me find, like write those packages for me, like in, import those packages for me. I'll focus on the code. Uh, so the first function we need is the db instance function, okay? And this returns a Mongo client. By the way, uh, the code that I'm writing here is very similar. It's almost the same actually to the uh, to the uh, connection code we have written for our restaurant management application and our uh, e-commerce management applications because they had uh, Golang with MongoDB. So in case you just copy and paste from there, it's completely okay because essentially I'm doing the same. I'm just you know referring that code right now. Uh, and um, so for, for people who have done those projects with me, you don't need to watch this. You can skip this part. Uh, if, if you're watching it for the first time, uh, then I, I recommend you follow along and I'll take a variable called MongoDB. And that variable is actually going to be equal to uh, the MongoDB connection string, which is localhost. Uh, on my port, it's running on my computer's running on port 27017, which is the default. Uh, port for MongoDB and then you'll have the database called calories DB. Okay. Uh, then we'll use the Mongo package to create a new client. Now, I usually manually type the man Mongo package here, but let's see if uh, the Golang, one of those extensions can find it for me. So I saved it. It didn't find it for me. How stupid is that? Anyhow, so here I'll say options dot client dot apply URI and here we'll send our MongoDB connection string. And Mongo is the package which will have access to all of this. So, uh, and also options. So I'll, I think I'll have to now get them manually because um, my extension didn't get it for me. So I'll say Mongo driver slash mongo and then I'll copy and paste it here. By the way, if you know, like I'm new to extensions, I've never used extensions before uh, because you know, they kind of make you uh, reliant on them and you start depending on them and then you're screwed because in interviews, uh, you don't get access to your favorite code editor. So in case you know why this didn't happen uh, and how I can fix it in the sense why how to make those extensions find these packages, the right packages on their own, please let me know in the comments. Okay, and here, uh, whatever this, the client that it returns, I'll capture that in this variable called client. And if error is not equal to nil, then I'll say log dot fatal error. And now, Hopefully it should get the log package at least for me. So I'll try saving it. Yeah, it was able to get the log package for me. So I think the problem is with the uh, third party packages sometimes mostly, okay. So here, then I'll say context cancel is equal to context dot with timeout. Whenever you have these kind of operations uh, with databases, you want to have a timeout because you don't want the program to keep waiting forever. Now you need the context package and the time package. And you, you get squiggly lines here, CTX client and cancel because we've not used them yet. Uh, if you say defer cancel here, so that red line at least goes away. I'll try saving it. Hopefully it gets the context and time package for me. Yes, it was able to do that. 
awesome. Um, then what I will do is I'll tell my client, which is this, the client, to connect using context, the context CTX, which has timeout now. And we are already preempting this error out here. So we'll handle it also. And we'll say log dot fatal error. And I'll print out connected to MongoDB if everything has gone okay. And I'll return the client because that's what I'm supposed to return from this function. As you can see, I'm supposed to return a MongoDB client. Okay, so um, whenever you see, by the way, whenever you see a, a capital C like this, it basically means it's a struct. So somewhere in your Mongo package, there is a struct called client and that's what we're returning here. And we're able to create that client with the help of um, our connection string, which we passed here to apply URI function for the client. And the main function was mongo.newClient. Mongo is the package. Now, when I save it, FMT package should also get imported here. Yeah, it did. So that client with the capital C is something that belongs to Mongo. So that's why we refer to it, to it as mongo.client. So whenever you refer to a struct from a package, this is how you do it. So if you hover over it, you can see what all the client has. This is awesome, right? Now you want to create your uh, a variable called client. So we'll say client and, and th this client is the one that gets passed around everywhere. So you see here entry collection, uh, Mongo uh, collection, open collection with client and with that client, you can access your calories collection. And that's the client that we are now going to create, which is of type mongo.client, where mongo.client, as you already know, is the uh, struct called client is equal to db instance. Okay. DB instance obviously being this function that we just created. So with all of this, you will create a open collection function, which takes in your client, client obviously being mongo.client. And um, it should just return mongo collection. And it should also take in the name of the collection. So here, you're also sending the name of the collection. And this is the open collection function that we are now creating. Okay. Now you'll realize that this needs to have a capital O to be able to call the function that we're creating right now because this has a capital O and capital C. Okay. Define a variable called collection type is Mongo collection. And just the standard MongoDB stuff where we say that in that database, help us with the database called calorie, calories DB. And in that database, help us with this collection name, which is coming to this function, which we are accepting in this function. And this function doesn't do much, it just returns that collection. So with this, our uh, function is done, uh, our connection file is done. And now we want to start worrying about our entries.go file, where we have quite a few functions pending, about five functions pending. And in this video, we'll just work on this function. In the next video, we'll close the other four and then we'll be uh, done with the packet at least. So um, um, navigate to your entry.go file, close all the other files if you want to, and come to this function called get entry by ID. In this function, let's create a variable called entry ID, which will basically be the ID. So whenever you want to get something by ID, you'll obviously have access to the ID. And that ID, you already know by now that you get access to that ID with the help of uh, the C. So we'll say C dot params dot by name 
id object id from hex and when i save this hopefully it should get for me the it should get for me the uh, primitive package let's see yeah so it was able to get all these packages for me that i needed here so i i realized the issue was that i was having these um, double quotes here and that's why the extensions were not working it, they were not getting all the packages that i needed but now they were able to get all the packages that i need and then why doesn't it get the history package for me i don't i don't know anyhow let's tackle handle that later so uh, the primitive package is part of mongo driver vson helps us to work with ids right so that id when we have to use with our mongodb you need it uh, in a particular format and we'll have context and cancel context dot timeout context dot background and 100 seconds now the entry that we'll fetch we're defining that this is what we'll be returning from this function by the way so we're defining that as bson.m and we'll use the, uh, the the standard mongodb function called find1 to use that id to find for us so with bson for uh, for getting all if you remember we passed uh, an empty object here with bson.m here we are passing the actual id so we'll say bson.m and pass the actual id for the id you have doc id which we just got uh, using params and we want to decode it into an entry into this variable called entry and here we'll have to specify the collection on which we want to run this program this function sorry and we'll handle the error here itself error is not equal to nil c.json http dot dot start some internal server error why is it not auto completing i don't know yeah so this auto completion is brought to us by tab 9 so if, if you want to uh, install it check it out it it does help but then it also makes you dependent on it um, <laughs> because i've realized that i i start expecting it to auto complete some things uh, and and i'm scared i'm i'm scared that i might even forget some of the syntax and it'll be, it'll be a problem because even now i have to switch between so many documentations to actually check all these functions right now uh, like the HTTP function, I always have to keep the doc documentation open. For the MongoDB pa package, I have to keep the documentation open. So I, I'm scared that even the basic things I might forget if I start rely relying, relying too much on uh, tab 9. So just be careful of that, guys. Um, if you're appearing for interviews, you don't want this to happen to you, trust me. And if everything goes well, you want to say um, HTTP.status, okay. and you're returning entry so that is it that is it so this is all that we're doing in this uh, in today's video and tomorrow we'll uh, finish the rest of the back end and then we all have to just have to work with the front end which will take i think two days maybe there was a small project i said it's a small project right and then we'll be done all right see you in the next video hope you liked it and do subscribe if you haven't already